Hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna start stripping the interior on this Jaguar XJS. So for those of you who are new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking out these videos. This is my 1990 Jaguar XJS that is about to get a Chevy LM7 engine swap or the 5.3 Vortec. I got this car for a pretty good deal and uh, well, there's a reason for that. Uh, half the V12 engine has no compression and uh, well, it's seen a little bit better days. So today my goal is to get this interior pretty much stripped down so we can kind of take a look underneath all this and get a full idea of what exactly I'm in for in terms of uh, repairing this rust here. So you can see I've already got a lot of the floor mats out, I've got the back seat out, that was pretty easy. But I'm going to start getting the seats out and then maybe work on the center console so I can remove some of this carpet around the transmission tunnel and we will see what the heck is going on under there. All right, let's go. Okay, the driver's seat is out and uh, I found a surprise. I found the Jaguar security system. I'll tell you what, I think this thing is uh, leaving and never coming back. Also, thank you, in-laws. This is an excellent uh, present. Thanks so much. I know you're watching. Okay, I'm an engineer by trade, mechanical, and uh, I'm gonna take some time to complain about things I'm seeing here. So, you know, right here, this is the rear seat bolt, you know, pretty typical, you know, threaded thing on this little tower, whatever. Up here, guess what? There's a nut down there. What the heck? All right, passenger seat is out. It's uh, not as bad over here as it was on the uh, driver's side, but that is until you start pulling this carpet back. I will show you. There is actually a hole in the floor right here. Right there. You can see in there that is a hole going straight to the ground. Um, that is not the worst thing in the world. Because, like, I was expecting this to be a lot worse. But if you look under here, like, this is all great. If you look right in here, right by the, uh, this seam, kind of where the transmission tunnel runs, everything is pretty clean. I mean, there's not that much rust. And all this happened from inside, really, because I think that this car um, had some water issues from sitting outside, and the water's had nowhere to go. It's just kind of sat there and collected there. And then people getting in with, like, salt on their feet in the wintertime probably adds to uh, the corrosive nature of the stuff that's been here. So that's a little bit better than I was expecting, honestly. Um, all this stuff still solid, you know poking any holes through it by doing that. But I wonder if we have the same thing on the other side, so let's go check. You know, like I said, far worse over here, but uh, you know, this is all on the inside. Underneath the car, it's not bad, so once this is cleaned up, I think it'll be okay. So let's take a look back here. See, what's really fun about this car is they glued everything. Everything is glued, so it's nothing but a pain in the butt stuff out of here. All right, let's take a look underneath. Hey, would you look at that? Solid. No holes. I'm happy about that. So this side, all it's going to need is a good cleaning and some uh, new paint or something. And then we'll be good to go over here. Look at all this adhesive. Like, gross man everything in this car is held in with an adhesive and it's so gross and so sticky i gotta wear gloves fun fact this is how you uh install an aftermarket cd changer you uh tap into the fuse box just like this you know because that's okay nothing could possibly go wrong there i'm starting to take out the center console here and I had a little bit of trouble trying to figure out, like, you know, how the heck do you get this off? It said to remove this vinyl thing. I can't quite figure out how to get that off with this. But uh, one thing I did figure out that took me a little bit was uh, to remove this panel right here. Well, one, you've got this bezel here that comes right off. And then this panel is held in with two very interesting nuts around each control. It's like, uh, see, it's got like two slots on it. And it 
holds this panel in place. I was able to get them off with uh, just needle nose pliers. They were really loose actually and I just kind of poked them both in there and started turning. So I was able to catch it that way. And now this thing's pretty loose and it should come out and I should be able to lift the center console out. Because what I'm really trying to do is uh, remove this aftermarket CD player junk so I can uh, unplug it from the back of here uh, properly. Okay, got the uh, center console out. These connectors for the heated seats and lumbar adjustment are absolutely killer to get apart. They're uh, very interesting connectors. I haven't seen them before. This is an interesting panel. It's kind of, these things are held in by like bent aluminum foil almost. It's kind of funny, but uh, yeah, this just kind of stays here. Um, but really, it's not too bad under here. I was hoping I wouldn't find like any bad rust or anything, and I don't think I've found that yet. You may be thinking, what the hell am I doing in this car right now with no interior, it's hailing, and it's really loud. Well, let me tell you, when I took the back seat out of here, this was filled with water, which means that there's a leak somewhere in this car. Now it's already rained once since I got at the interior and I know that water likes to form around here. And then it drains down and, and forms around here. I'm just kind of waiting around right now to see uh, if I see any more water entering the vehicle because we're definitely going to want to make sure that's uh, taken care of when we get this on the road. Oh, I think I see it right now. Yep, there it is. Look at all that water. That is a massive amount of water that's forming up there, so. I need to figure out where the hell that's coming from. Probably should have removed uh, this carpet, but you know, here we are. Is it happening over here too? I don't see it as much over here. So, this is interesting. This is good stuff. Oh, there's rust right there. That's probably quite bad. Oh, there it is. I found it. Do y'all see it? There it is, right there. Looks like the uh, the seam of the window is uh, where the water's coming in. It even kind of pools up there too. So that'll be a fun thing to address when it comes time to address it. Okay, I got that top piece out. It's uh, pretty rusty crusty right here and uh, right there. And I think that's just from repeated water ingress around the uh, window seal right here. So definitely gonna add uh, removal of the rear windshield and uh, resealing of that to uh, the list of things that need to be done. Now, as you can see, that is uh, a lot of water. Not great, and that's been happening for who even knows how long. And yeah, you can see right now, I just kinda created a channel there and Here's what happens, is it just kind of forms down there. And that hole is from uh, work I recently did, getting some of the uh, rust out from uh, the floorboards. You know, I'm in this car, I might as well just show you what I did. So, so I took the wire brush with the uh, angle grinder and uh, kind of cleaned up all of the rust and stuff. Uh, this side's not too bad, you know, we exposed one of those plugs, it was completely corroded. But uh, this side, We've got quite a few holes in the pan in the metal here, and uh, I think what I plan on doing with this is using some fiberglass and POR15. We'll see if that's what I do, but uh, that's the plan for now. Um, and if we come over here, uh, same deal. Took the wire brush to the uh, floor pan, and uh, we exposed a few new holes in the floor pan here. So that's not great, but what's good is there's lots of good metal left, and I don't think it's going to be necessary to replace the entire floor pan. I think we can just kind of patch this up. Same thing over here. You know, the biggest hole we have is right there, which is, you know, not great. But again, I think we can get that patched up and uh, make it so it'll pass inspection here in the great state of Pennsylvania. Sorry, Commonwealth. Probably get back inside before the uh, rain comes back. 
That's a lot of people are like, why are you getting rid of the V12? You should keep the V12. It's a great engine. Why are you getting rid of the V12? Well, guess what? I've been trying to get this out of my garage for like 15 minutes now. And every time it decides to run, it stalls by the time I can move this thing out of the way. So let's try this again now that I have a helper. It's so generously recording us. Give you a nice smoke show. Now we can move the car.